So I think the factors that determine whether a startup is successful or not, uh, I think, yes, you could say, well, the idea was a bad idea. So I'm not going to go over whether the idea was bad or, or the concept. I think it all boils down to the people that are running the startup, the people of your startup, right? Because I've seen so many companies that they have an amazing idea and they put together a team and the team is actually what blows it apart. Right when you when you look at it, that the, the team dysfunction is what caused it to to not be able to become a successful product or a successful business. So I think it all comes down to people, and if you can solve the people, uh, I think there's there's a saying that says I would rather have a B product and an A team than an A product and a B team, and, and I would totally agree with that. That the 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 companies I've seen succeed in the startup mode, it takes a very specific person and a very very good team to be able to pull it out and, and live through those tough times, live through the good times, live through the tough times again for the, for the next uh, good times. So often people who have never started a business get analysis paralysis. They have this great idea. They want the idea to be perfect, that they spend all their time that in extra money they have while they're doing their day job trying to get the product off the ground, but they're not really trying to get the product off the ground. They're trying to make it perfect for what they think the, the world needs. And, and I think the first thing they need to think about is, okay, what is the product? How fast can I get it out? And, and my whole worth as a person is not tied to whether this product is, is successful. It's tied to, okay, we put it out there and it either worked or it didn't, and, and how do we move on from there? So I think that's a key factor is the mindset of the, of the, the person starting or the group of people starting the startup is what are, what are they trying to get out there? I've worked with so many people who just failed to launch, right? They never were able to launch a product. Another key factor I think is honestly being in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, if you think back to the early years of Silicon Valley and everything, it, if you were in middle of the, the Midwest, middle of the US trying to start a high tech company back when Silicon Valley was just getting started as well, it, it would have been very difficult. I, it, I'm sure it's happened, but it would have been very, very difficult. Whereas if you were in Silicon Valley and you ran into a really technical person at a party who got to t start to talking and then you put everything together, you know, so being at the right place at the right time, there's a, there's a little bit of luck involved with that for sure that you have to say, Hey, you know, I know I don't have everything figured out, but I'm going to allow myself to be lucky and uh, jump on an opportunity uh, that's out there when, when you see it. I think another factor, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I mentioned that people have a failure to launch where they spend too much time analyzing um, their product or trying to get it out right. The other thing I've seen happen is people quit their day job too soon. Um, starting a business is hard. Uh, 80, 90 hours a week, 120 hours a week, whatever it takes to start that business. Um, but you have to have money to put food on the table for your family, uh, to, to be able to provide for your family. And I've seen several people where they think they have this amazing idea and, and they, they quit their day job, spend all of their savings, and it, it, everything takes longer than you think or takes more money than you think. So all of a sudden now they're in a bad position. They have to make short-sighted decisions as opposed to long, long decisions. Uh, so I would encourage them, if you have a day job that you can run while you're starting your business, that's very, very healthy to a point where then you just gotta jump and, and go into it uh, with, with both feet. I think another characteristic that somebody who's starting a business needs is a just huge hunger for learning, but not learning in the such that I'm going to take your advice and when you tell me something can't happen, um, that I'm going to believe you. But a learning of like, let me, inquisitive, let me ask questions, let me ask lots and lots of questions. And when I was looking at starting my Whisper, the internet business, Everybody I talked to said, why in the world would you go up against the cable company? Why would you go up against the phone company? And I took their advice and I listened to them and, and heard what they were saying. I'm not asking for your advice so I know what to do. I'm asking for your advice to understand your experiences so then I can form my own conclusions about how different things work. And I think as a successful startup person, you have to be willing to do that because the whole world will beat you down and tell you that you're crazy for even starting. You're crazy for trying to do this. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but if you know in your heart that it's what needs to be done, then you, you use their different experiences to help push you forward with what you're trying to accomplish.